So probably kind of a whirlwind uh, real training camp this time around. Obviously a new situation for you. Um, what's it been like for you so far? Um, definitely just a, a lot of excitement. Uh, yeah. you know, like you said, like a normal training camp, uh, you know, preseason, preseason games. You know, last year didn't get to play any, so there's just a lot of excitement to be able to play. And uh, just looking forward to it, you know, lo love this group of guys. Uh, you know, obviously day by day getting to know them a little better. And uh, man, so far they're, they're a lot of fun, and staff's a lot of fun, and just the energy here is a lot of fun. And uh, just blessed to be here and excited. Doug, even before um, John had his appendectomy, which is also nuts, by <laughs> yeah. um, even before that, you were repping a lot. Um, and it sounds like that's a little bit different than kind of your situation prior. Mm. Um, how has that been, um, especially in integrating into this system? And what are your impressions of the system itself? Yeah, I mean, definitely. Uh, when, when you come into a new system, uh, you know, obviously reps, for me anyways, reps are definitely a way to learn. Uh, and just getting more reps, you get better each and every day. And you just get more familiar. Um, you know, there is some similarities and, you know, some of the concepts we may do, but just terminology is different. And, you know, with those reps, you just get more comfortable. So, you know, every rep is just another opportunity to get better. What's up? What is it like? I know today, Kevin, I mean, he'll be calling the plays on Saturday, having him in the headset. I know he's drilling you and, and working you guys out every day, but um, hearing his voice in there, what is his command like? And, and what was that like for you guys today? Yeah, I mean, he, coach, coach has got great great command. And, you know, like you said, just hearing his voice, uh, especially when he's going to be calling the plays on Saturday and all preseason, you know, it, it just kind of gives you a little comfort, a good comfort level. And just hearing him every day and, you know, the way he called plays, you know, you, you kind of start picking up on, you know, what, what he's going to call, how he's going to call it, and, you know, it's just been great. What did you feel like you were able to get accomplished during the first 10 training camp practices? Um, I mean, just get better each and every day, get closer with the guys, uh, you know, obviously, you know, learning the playbook still, you know, picking up on new things, you know, trying to get the, the base plays down. And, you know, now with, with it being game week, just kind of, Get a good idea of what we're going to do this Saturday, and just getting ready to go out and you know play and be the best I, I can be for the team. Is there anything you're specifically looking to get out of out of Saturday and just, you know, preseason? I mean, just just for us to win, you know, show show uh, LA, you know, who's the who's the home team of SoFi Stadium. So a lot of excitement. Is there uh, this year? I mean, I, I know you weren't here last year, but this year as opposed to last year, there's a lot of uh, when you guys do the activation drills and things at the beginning of practice with. Mm -hmm. Kevin O'Connell, yep. there's a lot of uh, drilling that specifically pertains to working out of structure. Mm -hmm. You know, he's throwing pads right in the middle of your pocket, yeah, yeah. you're moving, you're throwing on the move and all of that. Um, what does that do in terms of, uh, as a play breaks down on the field, where does your mind go and, and do you sort of drill, rep that through in your head? I know that's been a part of your game for a while. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I mean, it's, it's funny because like when, when we go back and watch film after practice on well, the next day, you know, when we kind of escape, you know, coach would be like, hey, you know, look, that's the drill we did before practice. And and also it's good just to kind of to get the blood flowing, get a good tempo, um, get the legs moving because, I mean, playing quarterback, you know, it's all about legs and core. And, you know, he's, we, we do some great stuff before practice that gets us ready for seven on a team and all that good stuff. Do they let the whistle – like wait a little bit longer before they blow a play dead, knowing that you guys will be trying to do those types of things? Yeah, I, I don't know. Sometimes I, I feel like they blow the whistle a little too early, but uh, you know, coach is always saying no matter what, if the whistle's blowing, you know, try to finish. And uh, he basically says, you know, try not to hear the whistle. So uh, you know, we try to play every play, you know, play it out, and uh, you know, just put those drills and, and work and compete every day. And then I'm sure you have been asked this so many times since you got here, but. What's Matthew like? How does he mentor you guys if, if he does? And, and what is he like out there? Man, Matthew's awesome. Uh, he's just, I mean, first of all, he's just a great dude. And, you know, he, he's very, like, hands-on, even even with us. Uh, you know, lots of times, you know, not even talking about football. You know, he's, he's just he's just one of the guys. And uh, you know, I've been fortunate enough to be, you know, behind Matthew and behind Ben. And, I mean, two probably Hall of Fame quarterbacks. So, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot. Taking what I learned there and what I learned from Matthew, it, it's just cool to watch him and, you know, that, that dude's got a cannon, and he, he's just fun to watch in practice. Very stylistically different guys, though. I mean, both, you know, at the yeah. time of their game in various aspects, but very stylistically different. Some of the movement in the pocket and the, the arm angles and all of that. Do Absolutely. you feel like maybe you are, your style is a little more applicable to what Matthew does? Uh, I don't know. Maybe. Uh, maybe. I don't know. I, I like to take a little bit from both of them and, and just, you know, try to make my game better. Thanks. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it, y'all. Thank you. It. Thanks for the time.
You guys go ahead. Um, can we get a status update on Nick Scott and what happened? Yeah, so he got, uh, you know, tweaked his knee a little bit. Um, it's a little bit of a sprain of the knee, and, uh, you know, he'll probably be out for the next month. Okay. Yeah. So when you guys do roster manipulations and stuff, do you expect him to be back before that time comes, or are you? Are yeah, I think so. You know, I mean, the goal is to have him ready for the Bears game. So that's kind of where we're at with that right now. Yeah. Yeah, like, go ahead, then. It seems like you're a little frustrated again with the kind of the mental, emotional. Is that accurate? I think it's just it's it's camp days, you know, and it's there's a lot of different things going on. It's designed to be stressful, you know. That's why you practice. This isn't a rehearsal. This is practice, and so I like it when mistakes occur because we can correct it. We can all learn from it. It's coaches and players alike. You just don't want to see the same mistakes made twice. And you know, there's a, there's always going to be an added emphasis on the things that take place pre-snap. Uh, both offensively, defensively, and in the kicking game. And, and those are the things that you know, I'm a little bit less tolerant of. But there was a lot of good competition. Um, and so you know, in a lot of these instances, somebody's winning the drill, somebody's not. But I'm more interested in how do we respond from the next play, especially if something doesn't go bad. Everything can be good when you're working from the front. But you know, when things aren't going bad, how quickly can you snap out of it, be present, be able to move on to the next snap? Um, we'll see. We're working through that right now. But but John is definitely one of those guys that thought he got a lot of good experience last week. You know, and especially given the circumstances around uh, just having that appendectomy. You know, want to be smart and you know really. Uh, you know, John's had a really good camp. Looking forward to getting him back out here on the field. To that end, what are you looking to see out of uh, Bryce and Devlin on Saturday? When they get those yeah, yeah, I think just good operation. You know, being being good distributors of the football, getting us in and out of some of the right looks. Um, and really just enjoying themselves. You know, I, I think, uh, you know, making sure that you remind yourself to, to enjoy the moment, play to the best of your ability, try to play with a quieted mind, and, you know, let the other 10 guys around you help you as well. And I'm looking forward to both, the, both of those guys playing well. Tutu Atwell got a late start, obviously, because of the COVID. Is, is he normal? Kind of what do you want to see out of him this preseason? Just continued growth, Kurt. You know, um, just understanding what, what's being asked of him from the receiver position uh, within the framework of whether it's the run game, the pass game. Uh, he's doing a good job. I like the progression. Eric Yarber always does a great job with those receivers. And, you know, if he gets the ball in his hands, I want to see him be able to make some plays. And then he'll get an opportunity to catch some punts as well. With, Go ahead, Kurt. Just last thing, with him and his speed, do you – what would that look like? Do you like that matchup with having Deshaun and him both flying down the field? Yeah, I think, you know, and we got a lot of guys that can run. You know, there's a lot of players that can make plays down the field. I think, you know, the first thing, like I've said all along, is it starts with calling plays that give guys an opportunity to do that. And so I definitely have to make sure that I'm cognizant of that. But, you know, those two guys in particular definitely have juice. And depending upon the personnel groupings that we're activating, you know, they could both be on the field at the same time, could be one of them. They could both be, you know, waiting to get in. So um, they're definitely added elements, and that's one of those traits that they both possess. It's pretty unique and special, but there are also a lot of other good things that they do. Sean, with uh, Kevin O'Connell, I, I think you mentioned uh, previously he's going to be calling plays on Saturday. Mm -hmm. What are you like in the headset when he – takes over and um, what kinds of things are you looking for from him during that? Well, we're so much more regulated during the course of the preseason, so I think it's a good opportunity. You know, it was something that, you know, Jay Gruden afforded me the opportunity when I was in Washington and, and I thought it was great just to be able to get used to changing personnel, getting the play calls in within, you know, the 40-second clock or 25 out of a clock stoppage. And so, um, and then you want to see guys, you know, try to give guys a chance to, to be able to make plays and enjoy themselves, but it's very different than what a normal game would um, in, entail as far as, you know, just the different things that we're doing offensively and uh, in the run game and in the pass game. But I think it's just a good opportunity to get those experiences, getting comfortable just using the headset. But um, I'm looking forward. I know he'll do a great job there. We saw, we saw, I think we saw Cooper Cup listed as a returner on the depth chart. Is that real? I didn't see that depth chart if we did. You know, so uh, he, uh, he won't be our punt returner. Yeah. Checking in on I yeah, Darius, his ankle, you know, he's got a couple days, and so um, I, I expect him to be back later this week or next week. Uh, he just kind of had a little ankle tweak. We want to be really smart with him and, and get him back sooner than later, but do expect him uh, back within the next week. And then something that Ricky Morris said when we were talking with him, I think, last week um, was just about how competitive you are, and even when you're playing, like, pickup basketball, just curious how often you play pickup I haven't played pickup. I'd probably pull a hamstring or tear my Achilles if I played pickup basketball right now. So, I mean, I, I like to compete in whatever it is, but uh, it's, it's a, we used to play pickup basketball when we were in Washington. It was a scrappy competitor.
but uh, it's been a while since I played some pickup hoops. Sean, you now that you have a quarterback and a room full of quarterbacks yeah. from your top down who um, definitely are working with Kevin O'Connell on some of that stuff that happens when they're out of structure from the drills all the way through the practice, um, how do you talk to your offensive linemen or teach your offensive linemen or how do they learn you know, to develop that sort of innate if I got a block this way and the guy's reset is talking this way and now I'm coming this way, how do they how do they kind of uh, process that and how do you maybe teach it? Yeah, I don't know that you really teach it. I think it's more of a feel thing than anything. I mean, you know, football has 22 moving parts on every single snap. But in a lot of instances, you know, things don't always go according to plan. And um, I think that's the beauty of the game is the creativity that un- kind of unfolds when things do go off schedule. But I think those guys have a feel for, all right, when he breaks contain or when he does break the pocket, is he getting flushed to his right? Is he getting flushed to the left? Is he up and under? Is he spinning out? And those linemen have an understanding based on where those rush patterns and the reaction of the defense as they're trying to kind of mirror that quarterback. But it's really the 10 guys being able to work off of it, you know, we have rules that we try to implement in terms of, you know, working with the flow of the quarterback for the skill players, you know, and then the offensive linemen, it's almost just kind of staying covered up with the guy. Um, but when those things occur, I think those are kind of organic things that, you know, the more guys play, they just get a real feel for it. As a, it's, it's hard to truly simulate those types of things. And that's why you like the competitive opportunities. But with the quarterback not being able to get tackled, um, you know, it is sometimes hard to simulate in practice. Yeah, because uh, I just asked Duck about, uh, you know, when you guys can all break contain and maybe extend the play a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, do you think the whistle comes too early? Have you guys had a conversation about maybe, hey, we'll wait to blow the whistle just an extra half second to see how this develops? That- yeah, I, I think, you you know, you can sometimes manipulate, manipulate those situations in like seven-on-seven seven settings. If you're trying to work it, but with the team settings, usually the whistle is going to be fairly early when we uh, we aren't live on the quarterback. <laughs> so now that you're back here, is it like last year in terms of the meetings in the ten? Is there any? No, that's that we will use that as an opportunity to kind of walk through and have meetings in per you know kind of just meetings in there if we want to have a little bit more space than what our building allows. But um, we are in our building; we're able to operate normally out of the meeting rooms. But we'll still utilize that you know just in terms of just the structure of the day if we want to be able to do you know kind of some stuff where you're standing up and you're moving a little bit without having to feel like you get your cleats on and get on the grass. Rochelle had a couple more today, guess. but I noticed, you know, obviously going to be limited. Do you have a time frame on when you might be able to be a full practice? You know what, I'm not really sure. I think, you know, he's able to do a lot of the drills full speed off to the side, um, but, you know, we will have to put him in a cast when he does play full speed, what that exactly looks like and what the timetable is, you know, anywhere over the next couple weeks. In preseason games, you're obviously going to put your depth on display. Uh, how well do you think you guys have done it, keeping those, you know, the, keeping depth protection against the inevitability of injuries together at as many position groups as you can. Yeah, I, I think that's always an important part of what you want to do with the roster building. We'll get a chance to see a lot of our depth guys, you know, because there's going to be, you know, probably about 35 players that are not playing in this game for us. So, um, you know, it, it'll be fun. I think, uh, you know, the goal is always to try to stay healthy. I think that's been something that we've done a really good job of. That's a credit to our players, Reggie Scott and his group, uh, relative to the things that you can control. There's certain injuries that, you know, no matter what the circumstances are, unfortunately they would occur. But I think that'll be something that I'll be better equipped to answer after the next couple of weeks. What's it going to be like going against Brandon Sealy on Saturday? Oh, it'll be good. It'll be good to see him and uh, looking forward to it. Thank All right. Thanks, guys. Thank you.